Welcome to this special edition of the Met Report. I'm Benjamin Smith. Coming up, there was a shooting at the White House, and Metro State will be deciding on a name change once again. Next. Signs of obsession gone too far. This led to a shooting near the White House this week. Ballistic glass prevented the bullet from entering the White House. Pennsylvania authorities arrested Oscar Ramiro Ortega Hernandez after Secret Service and other police agencies found an assault rifle in an abandoned car just blocks away from the White House. Hernandez is expected to face charges of carrying a dangerous weapon. While federal officials continue to investigate, many questions about the incident still remain. We'll keep you updated on the latest. Metro State's strategic name initiative is back, this time with new options for the school's name. With Denver State University officially off the table, the new choices are Metropolitan Denver State University, Denver Metropolitan State University, and Denver State Metropolitan University. The goal of this initiative is to enhance and validate the school's standing as a four-year university. Students can vote on the name change by emailing namechangeinfo at mscd.edu. The votes will be counted on November 30th with the decision coming on December 1st. The Met Report got a few students' opinions on the name change. You know, it's a university now, so it's giving the school a lot more credit and higher prestige. We got the name all over the place. You know, it's on buildings, and you're going to have to, like, redo everything. And that just sounds like money out of my pocket. It looks like a lot of the other choices that they have are extensively long and somewhat confusing. We're all doing good stuff. Students need to learn. What's the point of, of making so much hubbub about the name, you know? You know, with all of this controversy surrounding the name change, I think it's important to remember that it's not the name that defines a school, it's the students. Colorado took the first step in changing its educational standards. Our state joined 10 other states in submitting a waiver to break away from the national standards of No Child Left Behind. Education Commissioner Robert Hammond says the state system focuses more on a school's growth rather than a federal benchmark. Hammond also asks for more flexibility in giving money to struggling schools. All states to submit a waiver will know if they have been approved in January. The Phoenix Center here on Auraria could no longer be able to support Metro students. The center previously served all three schools by providing support to survivors of interpersonal violence and sexual assault. This facility is at the end of a three-year grant from the Department of Justice created in 2008. According to Lisa Ingerfield, associate director of the center, this resource could survive with just a small cost of $2 per student per semester. Of the three schools on Auraria, only Metro has declined to accept this new fee. If you have concerns, you can contact the President Jordan's office at 303-556-2070. It is a problem that many people don't know exists, but for one group of people, it's a very real issue. Which bathroom is right for me? Transgender and genderqueer students on campus face this dilemma on a daily basis. But the Student Government Assembly is taking steps to correct it. Single-stall bathrooms on campus will be labeled from unisex to gender neutral, providing these students with a safer place to use the restroom. This move is in alignment with Metro's non-discrimination policy, one of only five in the state that includes a person's gender identity. Metro GLBT program coordinator Crystal Hoffman is very pleased with the resolution. It's also important to provide a safe space and, and it's also important to note that gender neutral bathrooms are not just for people that are gender non-conforming, they're for people who may have um, a parent with an opposite sex child or maybe there's a disabled student who has a caretaker that is an opposite gender and that's um, gender neutral bathrooms can also lend to that too. A more in-depth version of the story is available from the Metropolitan. For this and more Metro News, check out metnews.org. It's lunch and an auction for a good cause. The hospitality department is hosting its 7th annual Frosty's Feast Luncheon and Live Auction on December 7th from 11 a.m. to 1 p.m. in the Tivoli Turn Hall. Attendees will have the opportunity to auction for items such as a Louis Vuitton duffel bag or spa services while enjoying drinks and hors d'oeuvres, followed by a three-course meal. Proceeds will benefit the Hospitality Scholarship Fund as well as Wapi Yapi, a local nonprofit organization that assists families dealing with childhood cancer. Those interested in purchasing tickets may contact Dr. Cynthia Venushi at venushi at mscd.edu or by calling 303-556-3367.
You know, with the new building and this exciting, exciting auction, it looks like the hotel and hospi hospitality department is really taking off. One in every 10 adults could have diabetes by the year 2030. That's the word from a new study by the International Diabetes Federation. The World Health Organization thinks that such an increase will result in a double death rate from the disease. Currently, there are 4.6 million deaths per year due to diabetes. Because of the vast majority of cases are type 2 diabetes, which is caused by poor diet and exercise, the IDF says that with proper education and preventative measures, the predicted increase can be reduced. Remember the days where you'd walk home from school listening to your Walkman? Well, it seems like that was a long, long time ago. The online music magazine Sideline reported that major music labels like Sony, EMI, and Universal plan to stop the production of CDs by the end of 2012. The article claimed that labels will re release music through online services like iTunes and will limit physical c CDs to special edition packages to be released only through online sites like Amazon. You know, it's interesting that my first albums were actually on cassettes, which were soon replaced by CDs, which are now almost obsolete. And in case you're waiting until the last minute to buy your plane tickets for over the holidays, it's possible that you can find cheaper fares than those purchased months ago. Six to eight weeks is the best time to buy airfare. But if you are gutsy enough to wait until the week before your vacation, the prices could be even better. Many of people already use sites like Orbitz or an airline's webpage to get deals, but bargains can also be found by following airlines on social media sites like Facebook and Twitter. You know, it seems like some of the best deals these days can be found on ever-popular Facebook and Twitter. We only have seasonal travel dilemmas because of the holidays we love so much. Thanksgiving is this week, and with that comes many fun and delicious traditions. We always remember Thanksgiving's historical roots with the Pilgrims and Native Americans in Massachusetts. However, many new traditions have become important, such as Macy's Thanksgiving Day Parade, football, and copious amounts of tasty food. The Met Report went on campus to find out what Thanksgiving foods students are particularly fond of. Pumpkin pie. Uh, turkey. I'd say green bean casserole. I would have to say just uh, stuffing. Green bean casserole. Turkey. Definitely. The turkey. Uh -huh. okay. Pumpkin pie. Turducken. I would have to say sweet potatoes. Stuffing and turkey. You know, I know there are a multitude of different pies available on Thanksgiving, but the one that I'm going to be looking forward to the most, pecan pie. Well, that will be all for this week's show. For everyone here at the Met Report, I'm Benjamin Smith, and we'll see you in two weeks. Enjoy the break, Metro.